I'm sure you'll remember and be very familiar with good old BODMAS, which tells us the order in which we must deal with the operations in a calculation. Now that we've done a bit of work with exponents, we just need to add that into our order of operations. And so from now on, we'll be dealing with bed mass. And what does this tell us? It tells us when faced with a calculation, we first deal with the brackets, then the exponents. After that, we look at division and multiplication. And after that, we look at addition and subtraction. Best way to understand this is with some examples. In this example, we only have addition, multiplication and subtraction. We know that we need to do the division and multiplication before we do addition and subtraction. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to do that multiplication first before we go on to dealing with the addition and, and subtraction. So if we're going to do it slowly, step by step, we say, OK, the 7 stays, the plus stays. We first deal with that multiplication, which gives us a 15, and the rest stays. Now, at this point, we see that we only have addition and subtraction, and these are at the same level, right? Addition and subtraction, same level. So what we need to do then is simply work from left to right. So we say 7 plus 15 gives us 22, 22 minus 2 gives us our answer of 20, and we are finished. So all that our little bed mass has helped us do there is make sure that we all are operating with the same rules and we do things in the same order. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example. In this case, we've got brackets, We've got exponents, we've got some multiplication, and we've got some addition. So we need to go carefully step by step. So let's do it really boringly slowly. Once you get better at this, obviously you can do it a lot faster. The very first thing we need to do is the brackets. So let's make it clear that that's what we're going to deal with first. So we work out that 4 plus 2 is 6 inside the brackets. And we've dealt with our first level. The next level tells us that we need to deal with any exponents. Well, here are our exponents. So that's what we need to do in the next step. We need to deal with the exponents. So we get 5 squared means 5 times 5, so that's 25. And now we've dealt with our second level, which is exponents. We then look and see our third level is division and multiplication. So we need to do this and this next. We need to treat the multiplication next. So we'll do that. 6 times 3 is 18. 25 times 2 is 50. And now we are down to our very last level, which is dealing with the addition and subtraction. And so we'll say 18 plus 50, which gives us our answer of 68. So obeying the order of operations means we'll all get exactly the same answer. We will do things in the correct order. Before we continue looking at bed mass, I just want us to go over one important idea which will apply to all of exponents, square roots, cube roots and the like. Let us have a look at this. If we have got 3 plus 4 in brackets all squared, what we're really saying is let's take 3 plus 4 together and square it. So what we get there is 3 plus 4 is 7 and that all of that together needs to be squared. And so we will get our answer of 49. Let's have a look instead at 3 squared plus 4 squared. Here you square the 3, so it's 3 times 3, which is 9. And you square the 4, which is 4 times 4, 16. And then you add them together, which you get 25. 
hopefully you can see very easily these get very different answers. And so it's absolutely important that you realize that 3 plus 4 all squared is not the same as 3 squared plus 4 squared. Very similar for your square root. What does this mean? You want to take the square root of all of this together. So the square root of all of this together, well, if we put 30, if we add 36 and 64, we'll get 100. And the square root of that is 10, because 10 times 10 is 100. If we put square root separately, we'd have square root of 36, which is 6, square root of 64, which is 8, and 6 plus 8 is 14. Again, very clearly that this and this are not the same, right? So it is important when you're faced with exponents or square roots to realize that if you've got 3 plus 4 in brackets all squared, it's this whole thing together that you want to square, so you must add it together before you square it. Similarly, if you've got the square root of all of this, what you need to do is add it together first before you take the square root, because this means the square root of that whole thing. And important to note for as we continue with bed mass, if we kind of have this square root sign over two things added together, it's as if there are brackets around it. So we must kind of treat this like brackets. We're going to deal with a last complicated looking example. But if we just go through our bed mass steps systematically, we'll be able to get our answer with no problem. There are just a couple of things to remember. The first is that we're dealing with a fraction situation. So in this case, we work out the top, we work out the bottom separately, and then we deal with them together right at the very end. The other thing to remember is that just as we've just looked at, if we've got the square root over those things, we treat this as if it's a bracket. OK, pause the video now and see if you can work through systematically brackets, then exponents, then division multiplication, then addition and subtraction to get to your final answer. Then we'll go over it together. Pause now and try it. OK, so our first step was brackets. Remember, we said we're going to treat that as a bracket. And of course, there's a bracket. So we get square root of 9 plus 16, which is 25. And 5 minus 3, which is 2 squared. After that, we deal with the exponents. And we treat the square root as an exponent. So what we will get is 5 because square root of 25 is 5, and 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4. Then, after that, we deal with our division and multiplication. So 5 times 10 is 50. There's nothing more to do with the bottom. And only after that do we get to our addition and subtraction. So we get 56 over 4. Can you see we've dealt with the top and the bottom of the fraction separately? We're now going to bring that all together to get our final answer. And remember, if we've got 56 over 4, it just means 56 divided by 4. And if we take 4 and we divide it into 56, we get 4 goes into 5 once, remainder 1, 4 goes into 16, 4 times. So we get our answer of 14 and we have our solution.